Good morning, folks. Wind whipping hard in Colorado this morning. We've got news from beneath our feet out to Europa. Got to focus on Earth's magnetic shift at the end, but we'll begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day was relatively quiet. No significant coronal holes. Bright active regions spread across the southern hemisphere. Solar wind and solar flaring both remain low at this time. We will continue to monitor the sunspots for further development, but honestly, it seemed like they've all got their calendars and no, we're still gearing up for the big game of sunspot maximum over the next four or five years. Folks, we're going to go to Greenland and we've been discussing the waters around it quite a bit. Not only is the cold, fresh water melt stifling the heat transport in the sea, not only is the overturning circulation diminishing, not only do both of those things signal a major cold snap in Earth's future, but the Beaufort Gyre is still cranking its record cold freshwater content up for a release. Today, we learn a bit more about where it's sourced. There appears to be an enormous subglacial river running from the central regions towards the northern coastline. While some of this can be carried by the transpolar drift directly down into the North Atlantic, some of this is going into the Beaufort Gyre, one of the key sources for the Yale-identified cold climate bomb waiting to be unleashed. Brain break as we come to the dissection of a hurricane. Eta is across Florida here. Satellites are now outstanding at seeing where the cloud details are, where it's raining, how much it's raining, and other general intensity parameters. The IMERG and Global Precipitation missions have benefited greatly from these looks the last few years. Well, folks, it's time once again to reveal the Tom Shillery of the climate world. We're toggling back and forth between a fully red and blue map and one with lots of white. The one with lots of white is a cold whitewash, blue reduced to make it appear as if pretty much all we have is a warming world. Percentiles maps are a product of that you can prove anything with statistics paradigm. You want to know what Earth is really like, you use the departure from average. Also, has anyone else noticed that the USA is pretty much the only place that's ever deep blue, like anywhere, any month? I have, and I'm suspicious of the data coming out of the far less verified and more grant corrupted world. Moving out to space, we've got confirmation that 2020 SO is likely an old rocket booster from the 60s. In its far out orbits, it likely spends years. Goodbye again. Another jump out to Mars here. This story has been making headlines, but with only about 90% of its tool belt. Dust storms enhance water loss on Mars due to the extra lifting. If water can be lifted high enough at Mars, it's got about four minutes before destruction and loss to space. An interesting omission, however, is that all the dust lift science we've covered of late tells us it's a vastly electrical phenomenon, with atmospheric conditions playing an enormous role in the meteorological phenomena, and if it works on Earth, the Moon, and asteroids, it works on Mars too. Last stop here in space before we head back to Earth, we've got a strong signature of crustal hydrology in the Europa plumes. This would be very interesting since most people have presumed that they were like the ocean jets coming out of the south pole of Enceladus, but we know Europa has liquid water oceans too, and so that really made a lot of sense. But apparently, this is the geyser version of it. So folks, let's come back to the large-scale structure of the mantle, the core extension plumes. We're focusing again on the African plume today, the one that is the taller, thinner, less dense, and oriented perpendicular to the rotation of Earth plume, and which reaches right up to the East African Rift. Further study here today on the splitting of the crust and motion over time. It's moving slowly now, which allows discussion to be framed in the millions of years, but the slow crawl of geology is sometimes punctuated with unfathomable disaster. These disasters tend to follow the magnetic changes on the planet, which are the most robust elements of the cycle, and here we have an analysis suggesting that the common explanation for the South Atlantic magnetic anomaly is wrong. That's something we've said for years and years, as it is the point away from which the magnetic poles are shifting towards their Bay of Bengal collision point, and magnetism drops off with distance. Learn about the magnetic changes on Earth by watching our introductory videos at suspiciousobservers.org. It's also in our books, available at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.